Before I get started, I just want to make it clear that I know this caliper is completely out of calibration and it really should just be thrown away and a whole new one should be bought, but I like these old calipers and I want to fix it up because I purchased it and I might as well try. I'm not a professional and this isn't a video on how to do some small maintenance on a high precision instrument. This is really like drastic repair jobs on this old tool I have. So enjoy. I bought this Tourette caliper as a gift and I knew it was going to be in pretty bad shape, bought on eBay for fairly cheap, but I didn't know how bad it was going to be. Opening it up, it looks fine. Visually, there's not much wrong with it. I mean, it's actually quite clean, but um, you'll notice a few things right away. So first off, it's missing this piece here. And then it's also missing the piece here. So when this turns, you have, like on this one here, you have this little dial you can turn to lock this in place. Well, that's missing on this one. And um, on top of that, uh, everything is actually completely out of calibration. And it seems to be worn, but I'm not entirely sure. So the biggest uh, issue is right here. You can see there's a gap here when this is fully closed. There's a gap right there. And if I zero the caliper out, and I open it until it's closing the gap right here. Uh, we can see that there's about um, 2.5 uh, tenth of a millimeter that this is worn by. And there's almost the same gap right here. So actually, there's even more of a gap. It's out by 7.5 tenth of a millimeter. My idea here is to deform the metal of the inside caliper jaws. Assuming I can control the deformation with a small blow of a hammer, this should be totally possible, but I've never actually seen it done. On top of that, I'm going to have to regrind them, well, I'm going to have to refile them into place to make sure that they're actually in calibration. So I'm going to start by just removing the screws. I've never actually taken one of these apart, but how hard can it be? I'm going to try not to lose any of those tiny screws. I'm just taking the rack off so I can clean it perfectly with skipping just a tiny bit. It's a little bit dirty, not that bad, it should clean up. And now I'm gonna have to go try to pound those into shape. Oh, that's not good. The teeth themselves here on the pinion are actually broken. Now to take the dial face off, I'm just going to pry. I'm not going to use any padding or tape or whatever because I don't really care about the finish, but if you're working on a nice caliper, you really should. There's kind of two gears here and the top one spins independently of the bottom one. That's really interesting. I don't know why that happens. Okay, so that's actually spring-loaded. The top one and the bottom one are spring-loaded here. I'm presuming that's actually to prevent any slop in the gear, to all the play in the gear to be fully removed by this spring-loaded force here. That's pretty clever. You can see here that's the one that's stripped. I don't think there's an easy way to fix that. Okay, so now I'm going to reassemble everything, but I'll just give it a good cleaning first with some rubbing alcohol. This is the gear that was in two parts, but now it's disassembled because I played with it a bit. Um, and this little thing here is actually a spring that's tensioning those two gears together. So now I'm going to be putting a bit of tension on the two gears that are spring loaded. So I'll just lift one, spin it a little bit without spinning the other one. Place it back down. This small piece of metal here, that's a small spring, and that's actually going to save the gear that's missing a few teeth on it, because with this amount of pressure, it's going to put the teeth completely down against the rack here. And I tested it and it doesn't skip as long as there's less pressure on there. So it should work somewhat fine. 
but we'll see. So here's the pinion with the missing teeth, and it's it's working fine. So that's good. And you can see the spring action here. So I'm now going to individually clean every single teeth on there, which is going to take forever. Just notice that's a little bit dirty here. I'm not sure if this is a good idea, but I'm putting a drop of baby oil here just to lubricate things a tiny bit. Ugh, I didn't notice I poured that much there. <laughs> this is the dial face, and if you look carefully, you'll notice it's actually quite scratched. So it's hard to tell that it's scratched, but it is quite scratched. And to remove the scratches, I'm going to try um, baking soda and toothpaste because that's all I have. So let's try it. I'm going to put a bit of water. Okay, so that's definitely scratching it more, but I know the toothpaste works for the shiny part, so I'm gonna try to just remove the deep scratches and then repolish it after. This may be a disaster, we'll find out. This is it here after the baking soda. It's actually more scratched than it was before, and the deep scratches didn't get fully removed, but this might have helped or it might not have. We're not gonna know until I fully polish this. So to finish the polishing, since I don't have any real polishing compound, so I have some Crest Complete Extra Whitening Scope Extra Fresh um, Toothpaste. So I'd like to take a moment to talk about our sponsor. I ended up polishing it on the lathe with the slowest speed. It made a heck of a mess and my whole workshop smells like toothpaste, which is great but it actually did work quite well. There's rumors that 3M disguises their abrasive as toothpaste to get the exportation fees down, but you didn't hear it from me. I'm gonna finish off with this uh, organic or something toothpaste. They don't put the micron counts on toothpaste, but I think it's lower. Okay, so I went from the Crest toothpaste, which was kind of like a coarse grit, down to uh, this gum toothpaste that I found. And that was kind of like an in-between for me. And then I ended with this organic toothpaste, or whatever the toothpaste is, and it actually worked quite well. Um, I spent the better part of my morning on this, and it's like I'm cutting it down, but it's actually a lot of time. And I don't have a thing for toothpaste or anything, I just, you know, like I... Okay, so it's pretty clear now. I finished off by kind of wet sanding with toothpaste, just water and toothpaste, um, again with this one. And that worked pretty well. It's definitely an improvement. No more uh, large scratches in there, just a bunch of tiny, tiny ones. I, I'm kind of missing like a one last grit, but I don't have any other toothpastes. If you guys know of any better toothpaste brands, please, please let me know down below. And here she is. Definitely not perfect, but it's a large improvement. It's kind of imperfect, but you can actually see through it quite clearly. It's just a little bit wonky. And this is with the dial face behind it. It's actually quite nice. So if that's an improvement, that's pretty good. My fingers smell like toothpaste and it's quite unpleasant. The needle goes towards the top. And now just a bit of pressure. I'm kidding, I don't know how to put this back in. 
There's clips in the corners right here, so I'm going to push those in. Okay, and now with the hot glue applied right here, I can just do some tests. Just move it in and out. And it's coming back to the exact right place. So that means that the gear in there that was broken is not impacting the reading. It's not skipping. There's no problems, completely reliable. So that's good. On to the next step. So to um, pound them into shape, I'm going to use a brass hammer and that's gonna help it stay in place, not bounce back off, and it's gonna prevent the steel from being dented from the hammer. Oh wow, that actually worked. I mean, no, I knew what I was doing all along. Obviously this worked. Hammers always work. Okay, so now I'm gonna start filing those in. To calibrate the jaws the best possible, I'm gonna use this Mintitoyo caliper, which is my caliper in the best condition and best shape. So I've just took this V-block here and I'm gonna measure the inside of this. And now that they're into spec, I'm actually gonna remove some material at the top here because I know there's a small chip in there that's uh, skewing the readings. Okay, so it's done. I'm pretty happy with it, especially considering the shape it arrived in. The dial clamp doesn't actually look original. It's brass, it's quite different, but I actually kind of like it and it works really well. Here you can see that the back plate is held in place with these little pins, which I think look really nice. In my opinion, they did absolutely everything right from the design perspective to the engineering perspective. If you guys have any favorite tools or brands of tools that you think are equally gorgeous, let me know in the comments and I'll check them out. Well guys, thank you for watching. If you want to see more content, you can look at one of these two dapper looking videos. And feel free to like, dislike, or subscribe, or do a combination of such. And I'll see you later.